Okay, so I've got the first part, first batch of materials on my rear composite loop, the rear shoulder. It's a baitfish emulator flash on top of black UV ice dub in my second post. My second addition is going to be Grizzly Flashaboo. One of the materials that when I saw it, I had to have it. And I'm just going to cut off a couple of inches. And I'm going to lay it, the fibers, 50-50 over this, over this line, the line representing my thread and the dubbing loop, and that's going to... Can you hold that up? So uh, I will, and uh, yeah. And then I'm just going to put black ice dub on top of that. The ice dub is a nice material uh, in itself, but it really is just the Velcro or, this, or the, the bread in this sort of sandwich, this assembly I'm making. Wax the loop. And then I can hold this whole thing up. I'm not too rough with it. Baitfish emulator flash, UV ice dub, black, and uh, grizzly flash boo. And load it all in as one unit. And the thread, well, you didn't see, but the thread, I had a black line on a little piece of paper that represented the thread. And all the fibers, since they're not tapered, they're 50 50 over that, over that line, the line of the thread. Thanks. <laughs> Take a couple spins on your OPST dubbing spinner. And then I'm going to pick this stuff out. Not pick it out, I'm going to arrange it with my little whip finisher so that each fiber, as long as you're keeping tension with your left hand, you have a fair amount of flexibility in what you can do to this thing. And I want each fiber to kind of be by itself. I don't want it to be, everything to be piled on top of each other. The flashaboo has a way of sort of laying on top of itself, which is not a huge deal, but I don't want it to do that. Then I'm going to spin, and the key to this dubbing spinner is you just do it once, and the weight just keeps going and going and going. And there's not many dubbing spinners out there that'll do that, and there really helps when you have a dense loop like this. And the next one I do will be even denser. And then we pick it out. This is pretty important very important. Get rid of the excess dubbing. We don't want to just create a whole giant dubbing ball. We want, the main thing we want is for these other materials to really stand out, stick up straight. So I'll pick the dubbing. As long as your thread isn't too light, this is 200 denier vivis. You can yank on this pretty hard and it's not going to break. Be pretty rough with it. And now I have all this excess dubbing. But the good thing is I can save that for the next round. Otherwise, you'd run out really quick. And I'm going to brush. Pick and brush. <coughs> you can tell this is not the quickest form of fly tying in the world. That's okay, we don't use too many flies, at least I don't when I'm steelheading. This is one of the most important parts, is wetting the whole assembly with your hands. Getting a cup of water is always on my table. And this compresses the materials, allows you to tie a denser loop in less space. I get it soaking wet. Unfortunately, it means that your flies take a while to dry when you're done, so you don't really get to admire them, but it's worth it. And then to wrap right in front of that little mono loop, the mono loop I tied for the classic intruder rig. And watch out, you don't go 
over the loop. I've done that far too many times. And palm ring just as you would with any old hackle. So what you've done here is really create a hackle. A hackle from a bird that does not exist. Watch out for that flashaboo. It's pretty unruly. But you can already tell that just shrimpy effect is pretty cool. And I sort of overwrap my thread. And force it back. Keep doing it until you get it. And don't let those don't let those fibers stick forward. Good thing is that they're resist resisting you, they're also going to resist the current. And that grizzly flashaboo is pretty special stuff. Just kind of get her done here with the wraps. Cut it off. And now we have our first shoulder that's going to move by itself. I could have made those flashaboo pieces a little bit longer. Um, it's also going to prop up my ostrich. And I think the only orange doesn't really make sense. Oh, I do have pink. Okay. <coughs> Some pink OPSC barred ostrich in front of that. About four strands. Maybe five. Ostrich is pretty fine stuff. Doesn't. I'd kind of gone away from ostrich. Um, I don't know why. Just I was more sort of into rubber legs, but I just swam some flies in a tank yesterday and was really impressed. Sort of like fell in love all over again with with ostrich. It's pretty pretty awesome stuff. Another five strands on the other side. And this is our older ostrich. Our new stuff looks better than this. I just don't have any. Still pretty nice though. Felt equal. I'm liking this black and pink. right up against that shoulder so that hopefully they're kind of buffered by it. And now, how's that going to look over black? It's going to look good. This is lateral scale. Pretty cool stuff. On big flies, you can use it as a strand by itself. I like to wrap it. The gray and the black is a really nice color for trout flies. And it's transparent, so hopefully this one's not going to be too, too flashy. The black's going to shine through, so I'm going to cover all the, the mono, everything with black. <coughs> Just the easy part. Oh, I could actually rib it. I'm not going to rib it. This is going to be bright on bright. Sometimes I'll put a rib of polar chenille down, which if you have contrasting colors, it's pretty righteous. But not necessary. Probably a good idea to put head cement down before you wrap this body too. But if the intruder that I tied gets shredded by a steel head, I'm not going to really be too bummed because it means I hooked a steel head.
This is an OPST 45 millimeter steelhead shank, uh, excuse me, intruder shank. The returned eye makes a nice little platform for the dumbbell eyes. Can't even see my ostrich in back because it's, it's all wet, but it'll dry out. Some more ice dub. Lay down our first little piece of Velcro, first bread of the sandwich, and this is going to help complete our fly. We use ice dub a lot because it's nice and crinkly. Goes every which way, and it helps trap in the other materials. And some of the colors of ice dub work better than others. The, the silver and the blue are sometimes a little bit too straight to really uh, grab on the materials and break. Sometimes I'll break the fibers if I want. I'm trying, just trying to grab the ends and make them all roughly the same length. And sometimes you need to break them, but I'm not going to here because they're a decent length. So now I got my first, my, my base of dubbing laid down. And I have space probably for three different materials here. I only put two in the back, but I'm going to keep I'm going to keep the materials in um, the rear bit the same, which is baitfish emulator flash and hot pink. But I'm gonna, everything's going to be a little bit longer in front. So I'm going to start about like that, which is about two inches long. And I usually go shorter to start my materials get longer as I go up. I'm going to lay them 50-50. Call denied. 50-50 over the line. And I got a couple shorties, so I'm going to put more in there. Baitfish emulator is good. It, um, Flashy, obviously, but it, it makes a pretty nice body when you when you spin it. It's pretty substantive. My second material again is going to be the Grizzly Flashaboo. Again, this is going to be a little longer than the Emulator Flash. About like so, and this stuff will move quite nicely. It also provides a pretty good body. There's really th three main parts to a composite loop, is at least a good way of thinking is the, the Velcro to hold it all together, um, a scaffold or a structural material, hope it's a little stiffer to give it some body, and then a material that provides motion like ostrich or the classic example is ostrich but there's a lot of crossover and this one I'm going to put some natural lady amherst to finish it off I have pink I have pink too let's see here I'm going to use pink because I'm going to have natural grizzly hackle so when using Amherst in a composite loop, you really want to treat it first with a toothbrush because those fibers have a way of sticking together. Same thing with pheasant, same thing with turkey. You don't just tie it on, um, brush it out first. Now this is going to be hopefully longer than, than the previous two materials and I'm going to brush out the butts too. See, now we get some separation, and you can actually get it so that it lays down really nice and evenly in the loop. And I'm going to trim the butts just so. Okay. Lay them down. Just with the butts over the line, but shorter than the length of the dubbing strands, hopefully, so that they're not 
really sticking out. Butts really aren't terribly attractive, but one thing you can do is you can, if you have materials that have butts, you can put a tapered material in front, like angel hair in front, and that'll hide the butts, but I'm not going to do that. More black dubbing. Got ourselves a pretty good loop here. I've never tied this exact color combination before, so it'll be interesting. And just lay it down right over. And the key to tying a good fly, at least for me, is just going slowly. It's all in the details. It's not, it's kind of like casting. If you think about the far bank you want to hit, Think about the 100 feet of line that's spooling at your feet. You're likely to ignore the technique and you're probably not going to make a good cast, but if you focus on the fundamentals and sort of the, the details and the zen of it all, you're going to cast a lot better. It's the same thing with fly tying. So now we have this big giant mess not mess, whatever you call it, an assembly of materials here that you could never put into the dubbing loop without the dubbing. I'm going to make my dubbing loop just a little bit longer than the assembly here. Go around the base twice, lock it in. Wax it. And hopefully, you know, you can pick it up. I'm just picking it up right in the middle between two fingers. And it's staying thanks to that dubbing. And I made my dubbing loop a little bit too short. This is the hardest part. You got to open it with your left hand. And you can kind of, sometimes you can do it by brute force, which is what I had to do here. Okay, I got a little, a little funky up top, which is in the back, but overall it's pretty good. And as long as you can apply tension with your left hand, you, you can keep it under control. That was probably the worst one I've done all day, but I just lost a little bit of dubbing there. The flash is still in there. And again, just make sure that all these materials are free. Put them Try to break the Lady Amherst connections if you can, and even out the Flashaboo, which has a tendency to kind of double up on itself. I'm going to lose some dubbing out here too, but that's okay. Overall, I think it's going to be all right. Get as much evenness as you can. And again, this is where going slow, pays dividends. If I wanted to, I could trim these. If I wanted to, I could trim whatever. Give it a nice big spin with our OPSC spinner. This is where you don't want to use a fine thread. That already came out, but that's okay. Sometimes I use 140 Denier Vivas, actually most of the time I do at home for some reason, I think it's because what I what I ordered. And it usually doesn't break, but sometimes it does, but 200 doesn't. And here I'm testing, making sure their materials won't come out, and they're not. Now we'll pick it really aggressively. And so a lot of the dubbing will come out, and suddenly it's not quite as big of a giant jumbled deal as it was. I used to not pick the loops and um, just I, I just brushed them out and I think my flies have gotten better since I've actually started picking them. So you want the materials to really stand out. You want each fiber to actually be there. That's why you put it in there. So now I'm going to brush it.
And this is where the water is even more important as we part our materials, part and compress, compress and straighten, pull. And all of a sudden it's gotten pretty organized. It kind of looks like a hackle that you could just buy off the shelf, but you can't. And we're going to wrap. Palmering is, is crucial, extremely important, especially with this flashaboo. I want to come right up to the eye. I don't want to go s so far up that I can't tie my hackles in front. And you also don't want to leave a big space. If you leave a big space, it doesn't look so good, but all is not lost because you can uh, you can put a soft hackle, like a guinea uh, hackle or a Silver pheasant is really nice. Okay, I don't want to do too many wraps because right now space is at a premium. And I'm fairly happy with that. At this point, I could easily. Uh, where'd my ostrich go? It's got to be there somewhere. Oh, there it is. Um, I could put rubber legs on both sides, like I did on this one I tied this morning. Um, it kind of depends on whether you have space or not. I think I'm going to be conservative and just put two saddle hackles up in front. And I could put pink. I could put natural. could put anything. I'm going to go with pink, keep the, keep the pink theme going. That one will be good for the front. Ideally, you want to use two hackles from the opposite side of the bird. I have been known to not do that. This is an OPST saddle. It's good enough. We'll go with it. Ah, I lost it. Almost done here. Almost done. So measure out roughly where we want it. I think it, I want it a little bit past the rear post. Strip off some, some barbs for you to tie your thread. And then squeeze the bars between your thumbnail and your index finger and that'll flatten them out and um, make them behave better. They're really, they can be unruly and they can kind of ruin your day. But if you flatten them, they're, they don't roll around so much. Too short. 
I'll probably make that a little bit longer next time, but it's all good. Take off a few more fibers until you get the right length. Squeeze it between your fingers and lay it in there. Measure it out a little bit longer. There it is. <coughs> okay, now this is something that could ruin your day. Tie these stems down really tight. Is if you pull the hackle off of a fly you just spent nine hours tying, it makes you want to cry. I think I put the stem through the eye. Okay. And then I'll douse this whole thing with head cement for that same reason, just because I don't want those hackles to pull out. It's a nice thing about heavy thread, it doesn't break. You can yank on it at the end. A lot of times I'll break the thread at the very end if I'm using lighter thread. And there you have it, black and pink intruder. Pretty happy with that one. Um, I learned this technique from Jerry French, who would, would have no idea how to do this if it were not for him.